You are listening to Catholic Family Podcast. Greetings, fellow travelers through the liturgical year. This is Lisa Davis with a Marian Feast Day Quick Take today that begins with just a bit of a mom cast observation. Because you see, I was speaking the other day with one of my children about learning to appreciate all the facets of the people in our lives trying to appreciate their good features so much that their annoying traits fall into the shadows because every single one of us is annoying in one way or another. It's so important to see everyone, but especially our annoying relatives, in the light of charity for so many reasons, not the least of which is that maybe they'll then be more inclined to overlook how annoying we are. Right, you guys? It behooves us to have mercy on one another. We all have a lot of work to do on ourselves. Nobody is perfect. Nobody, that is, except our Blessed Mother, the one person ever born without fault. She is the Immaculate Conception, born free of original sin, without any predisposition whatsoever to failings. Can you imagine what it would have been like to live next door to the Holy Family, to greet the Blessed Mother as she hung clothes out to dry, for instance, or to stand in line with her, waiting to draw water from the village well while little Jesus played nearby? We know that Our Lady wouldn't have been what my dad used to call me, a jabberjaw, but I can't help but imagine that she would have drawn the good-hearted like a moth to a light. In today's reckoning, a poor soul who didn't know better might think that such a humble maiden wouldn't have jumped off the page enough to interest them. In these crazy days, we've been indoctrinated to assume that flaws make a person interesting, that we should be accepted not in spite of our flaws, but because of them, that perfection is boring or bland, that we would be foolish to strive for it, we've become a society that tears down its beautiful ancient cathedrals and praises its junkyards for their variety and all-inclusiveness. This, of course we know, is the devil's work. As Catholics, we're blessed to know that Our Lady is the model of perfection that the cathedral architects of Holy Mother Church aspired to. And falling short, as they of course would, we're left with a yearning for the real and true beauty who originally housed our divine Savior in her womb. Our light, our sweetness, and our hope. The Blessed Mother, by the grace of God, has given us many glimpses of herself through the ages, and in her perfection we can only be charmed and inspired. To know her is to love her, and to try to be as like her as we can. To this end, the Church presents to us today one of the titles of Our Lady that shines a light on one of her perfections. Not only that she is our succor, our help, but that she is prompt about it. She has no committee that she has to apply to. There is no paperwork. She sits right next to the throne of God and, as his mother, has his direct attention. Remember Cana? His mother can persuade even when he hesitates. When it's for our spiritual good, there's no question. It may not always be God's will that our prayers are answered in haste, but if you want your pleas to get to the front of the line, so to speak, your best bet is to appeal to Our Lady of Prompt Succor. Who better than our loving mother to know how to present our needs to the Heavenly King? Here's the history of the Church's blessing on this title of Our Blessed Mother. One of the earliest orders to help settle the Americas, a group of Ursuline sisters accompanied Father Jean-Baptiste Le Moyne to New Orleans all the way back in the year 1727. Arriving from Rouen, France, they founded a convent, school, and orphanage in this largely French settlement of what is now the state of Louisiana in the southern U.S., by 1809, the work of the quickly growing mission had begun to overwhelm the few sisters, and the superior at the time, Mother Saint André, wrote to her cousin, Mother Saint Michel Jean Zoul, in France, begging her to join her in New Orleans and to bring more sisters. Now, Sister Saint Michel wanted nothing better than to help bring the faith to the new world, but protocol had to be followed. 
the sisters had to apply for permission from the order and then wait to receive the official blessing of the Pope before even beginning to make plans. A long, drawn-out process. But knowing how much the help was needed in New Orleans for the good of souls, Mother Saint Michel prayed to Our Lady for a quick and favorable answer from the Vatican, promising to have a statue made honoring the Blessed Mother under the title of Our Lady of Prompt Succor if her prayers were answered in a speedy fashion. Remember now how slowly the world moved at this time. No internet, of course. There was not even a mail service as we know it. And let's just say that patient deliberation was more the rule of order in the papal offices than speedy delivery. Any kind of prompt succor would have been miraculous in the best of times, but these were not the best of times. France was embroiled in the ongoing Napoleonic Wars, and Pope Pius VII was being held captive by Napoleon. You wouldn't have been wise to bet on any action being taken on such a request within a decade, but there is no obstacle the Mother of God can't overcome. Within five weeks, Mother Saint Michel received a letter of permission, and within a year, she and a company of Ursuline sisters arrived in New Orleans, bearing a specially carved and gilded statue of Our Lady of Prompt Succor. Proof enough that the Mother of God wished her children to trust her for a swift help in time of need. Many miracles have accompanied prayers to Our Lady under this title over the centuries, but on record are two interventions, specifically in New Orleans, that are most notable. A dozen years after Mother Saint Michel's arrival, New Orleans suffered a tragedy not uncommon in those days. A fire broke out in the city that was virtually impossible to get under control. Pretty much every structure in the city was constructed of wood. There were no fire brigades yet, no hydrants, of course, and no way to douse the rapidly engulfing flames being whipped by strong winds through the city. The people of New Orleans were powerless to do anything but gather what they could and flee to the outlying countryside. But the Ursulines refused to abandon their chapel and buildings. As danger neared, full of trust, they placed the statue of Our Lady of Prompt Succor in the convent window that faced the fire and prayed like crazy. Our Lady of Prompt Succor, hasten to help us or we are lost. And miraculously, the wind immediately changed direction in the nick of time and the convent was saved when almost everything else around it was burnt to the ground. This marks the first public miracle attributed to the Blessed Mother under the title of Our Lady of Prompt Succor. The second occurred during the Battle of New Orleans in 1815, when 10,000 British troops descended upon the city. The defending American soldiers, led by General Andrew Jackson, were outnumbered almost two to one, and defeat was more a probability than a possibility. Hopeful of sanctuary, the people of the city fled to the Ursuline convent for safety, while the American soldiers fought the British from behind bales of cotton. In the meantime, the good sisters and the townspeople held vigil through the night, praying in the chapel before the image of Our Lady of Prompt Succor. And miraculously, the Americans defeated the British with minimal casualties. The actual battle lasted 25 minutes. The British suffered 800 dead or missing in action, while Jackson lost only seven men with an additional six wounded. General Jackson, who was not a Catholic, was nevertheless convinced of the heavenly support delivered specifically by the sisters' prayers and thanked the Ursulines in person. He is recorded as saying, quote, By the blessing of heaven directing the valor of the troops under my command, one of the most brilliant victories in the annals of war was obtained. To this day, the Ursuline sisters celebrate an annual Mass on the day of the victory, January 8th, to thank the Blessed Mother for her intercession. Pope Pius IX authorized public devotion to this Marian title on September 21st, 1851, designating January 8th as its local feast day. The miraculous statue received the honor and approbation of the Church with the blessing of Pope Leo XIII in November of 1894, followed by the canonical coronation of the statue, crowning both the Blessed Mother and the baby Jesus. In June of 1928, Pope Pius XI declared the Blessed Virgin Mary, under the title of Our Lady of Prompt Succor, the patroness of Louisiana. 
the original statue of Our Lady of Prompt Succor was moved in the 1920s from the original site of the Ursuline Convent in the French Quarter to the National Shrine of Our Lady of Prompt Succor on the State Street campus of the Ursuline Academy and Convent. It's the only statue in the United States that has been crowned by a Pope's delegate and is one of the few miraculous statues in North America. Prayer to Our Lady of Prompt Succor an appropriate one for these days of unrest and insanity. Our Lady of Prompt Succor, Thou art after Jesus our only hope. O Most Holy Virgin, whose merits have raised Thee high above angel choirs to the very throne of the Eternal, whose foot crushed the head of the infernal serpent, Thou art strong against the enemies of our salvation. O Mother of God, Thou art our Mediatrix, most kind and loving. Hasten then to our help, as thou didst once save thy beloved city from ravaging flames, and our country from an alien foe. Do now have pity on our misery, and obtain for us the graces we beg of thee. Deliver us from the wiles of Satan. Assist us in the many trials which beset our path in this valley of tears, and be to us truly our Lady of Prompt Succor, now and especially at the hour of our death. Amen. Greetings today to all the faithful and to our sister parishes in Louisiana on your patronal feast day. Blessed be God in his angels and in his saints. <laughs>